This episode of Film Riot is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Riot, NAB stuff. Welcome to Film Riot, the show that takes the mystery out of the effects techniques. Go to some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley, and last week I was fortunate enough to make my way out to NAB. I did a panel for Adobe, a couple of interviews, and then was able to check out all the goodies on the show floor. And just like every year, it's just sensory overload of epic new toys, all of which I can't have. It's like pleasant torture, really. But today we're going to take a look at the show, the stuff that excited me, and a deeper look at one of the most talked about things to come out of the show, which is the Black Magic Camera Ursa. So let's do that and stuff. And I'll check this text message. gonna go through everything from NAB that would just be impossible but I am gonna point out a handful of things that got me excited starting at the ICANN booth with their new follow focus system what I love about ICANN is that they're a company that is catering to a lower budget market but bringing solid quality to that market their new follow focus system is definitely proof of that I was able to mess around with it a bit and I really love the feel of it very responsive and comfortable to use and I've been looking for a lower cost wireless solution like this so I'm really excited to give it a shot now over to a monitor recorder at the Atomos booth. They just announced their Shogun 7-inch monitor recorder, which can record up to 4K to either ProRes or Cinema DNG RAW. And you can also have an XLR input through a Limo breakout cable, which is really nice to have. Then they've added the smaller stripped down Ninja Star. No screen on this bad boy, which records ProRes using CFast cards. It's a nice secondary recorder and perfect for a GoPro, especially when you're throwing that thing on like a quadcopter of some kind, since it's light enough to attach and fly around. Next, I stopped at the Kessler booth to visit old Kessie baby. They have that parallax system that you may have seen already, which gives you an automatic pan for your shots, a really simple but genius add-on to your slider. They also have the new Unidrive, which is a fully digital system like the Cinedrive, it's kind of like the little brother to the Cinedrive, really. Pretty much a stripped down motion control system. Super compact, so very easy to travel with and set up. Not as capable as the Cinedrive, of course, but I am already thinking of all the things that I can do with this bad boy. Next, I stopped by the Andra booth. They've come out with a whole new way of pulling focus. I'm not really sure what I think about this yet. Basically, it's using a small motion capture system to track the subject for fully automated focus pulling. There is manual focus pulling, Apparently, I did not see that. It's very interesting and could be an amazing evolution in focus pulling, but it is the type of thing that I would really have to get my hands on in a real filming situation to actually form an opinion of. To be honest, I'm really interested, but very skeptical. Moving along again to the Lettuce Direct booth to check out their new Helix 3 axis stabilizer, which was easily one of the things I was most excited about. It is super tight, light, and compact solution for stabilization. And now I have not fully tested this yet, but from what I've seen so far, it seems like this is the right next step in the new gimbal stabilization craze. Hopefully I'll get my hands on one soon to show you guys, because unlike a lot of these other stabilizers of this kind, this one, is under 10k around 4k i've been told and does some stuff that the other ones does not and finally we head over to the aja booth now every year there is a ridiculous amount of cameras that come out it's kind of exhausting actually i'm of two minds with it it's a little annoying and a little awesome all at the same time that competition is really driving down prices and driving up quality so it's it's a good thing but my god there's a lot of cameras and since there aren't enough cameras that come out yearly aja decided to throw their hat into the ring with the scion and of course i'm making a little bit of fun there but this one does look really interesting and as i heard someone say it's basically their recorder with a sensor slapped on it's a 4k camera with plenty of goodies and it's actually the camera i was most excited about this year i haven't seen much footage from the camera yet just a couple of quick shots that they have in their promo that you can see here but those shots look great there's a really nice filmic style to the image that I'm really digging. And based off the specs 
and the pricing, which is going to be under 9000 they say, this could be an incredible camera for the indie filmmaking community. So I am very excited to get my hands on this one. But those are the things that made my little filmmaker heart beat faster, and I know I didn't go into much detail with any of them, so if you want to get more detail on any of the things that I just mentioned, check the notes below if you're watching on YouTube for the links for more info on each one of those. But now, for a quick break, then we talk about the camera that you all have been asking about the most. Domain.com is the place to go if you want to get yourself a website to put yourself on the internet so people can look at your face or your business or whatever it is that you want them to look at. It's like a billboard. It's a billboard on the digital highway of life, really. And to make that billboard, you need that hosting service, which is reliable and affordable. And you got to get yourself a domain name. And if you have a hard time picking one, Domain Discovery Service is going to help you pick the right name for you. And it's already affordable. But we can make it more affordable by using the coupon code FILMRIGHT at checkout and get 15% off your domain name and web hosting. It's, it's good loving from the oven. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. Logo. So one of the things, if not the thing, that got the most buzz this year at NEB was the Ursa Cam from Blackmagic. Yes, another camera from Blackmagic. And although I say that, each one that they come out with really is fascinating. There's some kind of interesting idea behind it. They definitely are trying to innovate and create things that others aren't really doing. But instead of me talking about it, I decided to meet up with the president of Blackmagic Design for him to give us a rundown of the new camera. So this is Ursa. This is our, our full-size Blackmagic production camera. You know, for several years now, we've been putting out some of these great uh, DSLR-like sized cameras. You know, when we looked at that market, we thought, how do I empower these customers to have this great post-production workflow? And uh, at $3,000, we were pretty much welcomed. Uh, we sold a lot of these products, and we were kind of surprised to see, you know, guys were adding $10,000, $20,000, $50,000 worth of gear on top of that. Like, we had made a great little building block that could be kind of built out to these big, full-size cameras. And that was kind of the seed that became Ursa to say, you know, I bet we could make a pretty nice full-sized camera. The sensor that we're using inside of here is the same as our production 4K camera. So the specs are gonna look the same with the Super 35 millimeter size sensor, the 12 slots of dynamic range. Um, but the nice part is this is a whole removable uh, removable bit where we can take the whole lens mount and sensor out. So we're showing it with an EF and a PL version of that. We also want to do a B4 version later in the year and that may be a different sensor package. Or maybe if in two years time we find that there's a new sensor that we want to use with a different lens mount, we can sell that as a upgradable piece. So our first thought was, okay, well we wanted to have that look and feel that I could put it on a shoulder mount and I could use it with an EVF and I can use it as a single person camera. Or I can put it on a tripod and I can still make it a single person camera. What if I want to have a multi-station use camera. So the idea here of having, also we see this, first thing people notice is this giant 10 inch HD screen here. So I can have a director standing here, making sure that his frame is completely in shot. If I'm a single guy, I can still be using all of my typical, this is all touch screen menu controls, just like we're used to seeing on our current cinema cameras. But if I'm gonna do a multi, a multi-person camera, I can come around here, I can have an audio guy standing over here, have his headphone jack, be adjusting his audio and his audio channels. I can be having an assistant over here, maybe they're pulling the focus for me and they're checking out all of the assist station or controlling any of my other menus or perhaps they're doing all of the slate data over here. So the idea of different zones around the camera, we've really thought about the workflow about around the camera as well as workflow of working with the camera. Um, it is still shooting as ProRes and will be a raw, raw and ProRes camera. We've moved over to new CFast technology. Um, we really like these CFast cards. I think they're going to be great for video. They are a small form factor. Um, they are a little, they are expensive. They're $1,200 right now for about 128 gig. I think it's about 20 minutes-ish of uh, ProRes and about six minutes of raw. And on the back, the big thing is this is a 12 gig SDI camera. Um, so we're able to go up to uh, Ultra HD 60p. Uh, it's the same sensor. The sensor in the other cameras have the capability. The big problem there is heat. We can't deal with the heat in those small form DSLR shapes. Uh, and here we have the more room. We also have a, uh, a, a water cooling, liquid cooled system in here. And there's just a silent fan on the bottom that's, that's pushing the warm air out, but it's basically a water cooled system in there. So we have the 12 gig SDI on there. We have reference, we have time code in and out. Um, it's a really fantastic product that we're excited about. Hope to be shipping that in July. Uh, it's using the same sensors. So we feel pretty good about that. Uh, the big challenge is gonna be just wrapping up all of the software, making sure all the parts are, are coming through. Uh, we do have different prices for the two different models. The EF version of the camera is about $6,000 and the PL version is about $6,500. So uh, really excited. Uh, people have been responding really well to it. And it's uh, been 
well received so far. Logo. So there you have it. As always, I will hold my opinion until I've had a chance to actually get my hands on it. There are a lot of interesting ideas behind this one, so I would definitely like to test it out. But that is it for today. Be sure to check out the notes below for links to all that stuff that I talked about, including some of the interviews I did at NAB. If you're interested in checking that out, you'll be like, look, Ryan. And I'll be like, yeah, me, because you know, stuff. But as always, Twitter, here, you can follow me and whatnot. And also, my Facebook page, right here. I've asked uh, a question about what you guys were more, most excited about that came out of NAB. I'd love to read your thoughts, anything that I didn't mention that you thought is worth taking a look at. So again, post it there on the thread that I posted there. And I'll see you guys next week when I find a computer was behind the whole thing. Stupid twin brother.